We are now live. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Triumphant TV. We appreciate you stopping by. Tonight's interview is what Triumphant was designed for, to bring to you black up and coming entrepreneurs doing their thing. Um, if, if you just started following me, you understand that how Triumphant came about was I was driving through the Bronx coming up town and I was listening to 1010 Winds. That's a, a popular news station for us. They go 10, 10, 10, gives you, uh, give us 22 minutes and we'll give you the world. So that day, each 22 minutes was a whole bunch of black people did this wrong, black people did that wrong. And in the area in the Bronx I was at, um, I was working for Coca-Cola at the time. I knew a lot of good people who were doing good things in the community. So I was like, where's those people? Where, who's talking to them? So um, the name Triumphant came up uh, in, in, in mind. So, you know, I decided to be, bring to light uh, entrepreneurs that's doing great things, community activists that's doing great things. And another part of the segment I'm going to uh, start filtering in really soon is kids that are in school killing it in their grades because we need to see a different um, narrative than the media, sh media shows us. So that's how Triumph came about. So we're about to get into this whole thing. Um, I have two wonderful guests. They are the owners and operators of uh, uh, Hello Black Man Journal, and they do some amazing work across the board. We're going to ask them some questions. Um, we're going to go back and forth for some things, see how things pan out. I was told I could ask for anything I want to. She doesn't know who she's talking to. <laughs> she doesn't know who you're talking to. <laughs> yeah, I know who I'm talking to. I've been, I've been on enough shows with you, young lady. I've been on enough shows with you to understand how that gets down. So you know my no filter shirt. <laughs> yeah. So who's uh? Let's 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 get it popping. Who are you guys? Let's 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 figure that out first. Let's go go names. You know what we what we do what we do who we are. Um. We are a reflection of our community. We are um, two adults that have struggled with communication in the past. Uh, we have recognized that it is something that we want to be a part of fixing. And we know that it's it's one of those things where uh, if 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 not us, then who? Right. It, it, it gets to that point. In everybody's life, if, if you don't fix the problem, then who's going to fix it? Uh, at that point, you know, uh, a lot of people can always ask questions, ask questions and point, but somebody got to get to the root cause and say, hey, I, I got a couple of answers here that could help help us out along the way. Really? So we, we are we are workers. That's who, that's who we are. Nice. So name, uh, yeah. you know, let, let, let's get that. Let's get your name. Uh, let's 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 get uh, let's let's do that first. Let's OK, that first. Uh, my name is my name is Jamie Jenkins. I'm from Hazelhurst, Mississippi. I'm Kalisha Patrice. I'm from Fayette, Mississippi. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. So, okay, um, let's start off with this. This is a question I ask everybody when they come on my show, right? Okay. And each of you have to provide an answer. Okay. If you could change the world by doing one thing, one thing to change the world, what would that one thing be? Hit it. Oh, you want me to go first? Mm -hmm. Ladies first. <sighs> I would make, um, <laughs> this is a tough question, Tony, you came out hitting. Mm -hmm. So if, if I could do one thing, I would definitely make communication better because I, I do feel like that the root of all problems come from communication. You know, I think that people don't know how to effectively, um, they don't know how to come across or they don't know how to give information and receive information. I think most wars, most everything start because we're not effectively communicating with one another. So I would make communication better. That's what I would do. Nice. I'm a big communicator myself. Yeah. When he said we struggle with communication, I was like, we. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say that. That's not, yeah, what that he said. <laughs> That's not what he said. That's what he said. Um, Go back and watch the tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh Lord! So, so, Mr. So Mr. Jenkins, what, yes, would you, uh, what would you give the world if you could do one? You, I'm, you, I'm, this, the world? this is a, a, a stickler for me, and I think that it is something that would change the dynamic of the black community. Um, you're going to have cases where two parents don't stay together. Right. You're going you're to have cases that that's that's a given, um, and based on time. 
it's more likely than not. Right. <laughs> it's more likely than not that there'll be a separation in 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 in, in parents. Okay. What I would do to change the world is the kids would go to the father. It would be automatic. Wow. Automatic. Wow. Okay. Um, this, this is why. Uh, because normally what happens is uh, the mother gets the kids, one, two, three, four, ten. It doesn't matter. Normally the father starts over, uh, you know, child support, yes or no. But but he 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 really gets to start his life afresh okay. while the mother has the bearing of you know she, she, you know school you know it, it cuts down on her percentage of going back to school getting a good job further education it it it, it all that kind of pushes and and, and kind of pulls down the black female in the community now i'm not saying take the kids away from her but I think the 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 parent A, the alpha male, should have the care of the child. Okay. And now, now you have all these young men that we say don't have a father figure. Oh no, we're gonna fix that. We're gonna fix that. Now they're with their dad. Now okay. they are. Now you somebody you got uh, all these women with daddy issues. We're gonna fix that. They wow. with their daddy. Okay, and, and, and so now he bears the weight, and now the woman can she, she, now she can get back into her education, start her life, and do do those things. I think us as alpha men should do that. That's 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 what I would do to change the world. All right, I, I like that. You you want men to step up? Yes, absolutely. You want men to step up? All right. Absolutely. I see. Uh, I see our partner back there. You know, holding a tongue. Because uh, we know she's a live wire. So, Love Tuck, you see what Love Tucker said that back there. <laughs> Love, I'm not, I'm not a tongue holder. I was just respecting his opinion. I, I've heard him express this many times. Yeah. So, let's, so, let's stay on that for a second because um, I'm, I'm almost in agreement with you. I'm almost mm -hmm. in, a, in agreement with you because what you said was correct. Um, what I saw earlier today was really heartbreaking. Um, I saw an interview of a, a young man that was on, uh, I'm not going to say his name because I really don't like this particular uh, radio host, um, but he was talking about how he almost committed suicide twice. And one of the things that made him feel that way, he felt abandoned from his father. He didn't get all the acceptance from his father that he needed. And I began to contemplate that and, and think about all of the children out there especially the young black men who are looking for that role model to step up and, and, and kind of fill in that gap. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. He brought up another great issue. Like a, a lot of us that play sports that don't, that didn't have a father figure in their home. Um, we looked at the coach as our father figure, right? Mm -hmm. So now when you stop playing ball, you didn't make it to the league. Now you out in these streets with no, with no support. Yeah. Where's that father figure at? You know what I mean? Like we're going we to we fix, yeah. we 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 fix all that. We're going to fix all that with one thing one fail swoop. Yeah, so that, I, I like I like the thought. I like I definitely like the thought. Um, so let's do this. Tell me about your childhoods, both of you. Um, I had this is funny because we talked the other day about being spoon fed versus not being spoon fed, and we talked about the difference between being spoon fed and having a silver spoon in your mouth. Okay. And I think that, you know, both of us, I, I want to speak for myself, I don't want to speak for him, but <laughs> we have, we've had pretty sheltered childhoods. You know, I, I grew up with a mother and a father in a house who are still together. Right. That doesn't mean it was a perfect, you know, household, okay. you know, but I, I was able to see a lot and I, you know, had a very sheltered community. I was raised in a village. My grandmother lived a rock chunk away from me, as well as all of my aunts and uncles. So come out, come out, come out, come out. Did you say rock chunk? Rock chunk. <laughs> like chunk of rock. <laughs> well, I, I, I just, I just, I just I've never don't heard that before. Don't do that. I've never heard that before. <laughs> rock chunk. You can chunk a rock to my grandmother's house. <laughs> So, I mean, we lived in a very close knit community and I was raised by a village and, you know, we never came home where there wasn't an adult there. We always had food to eat. We could go to anybody's house. So my childhood, we did not have a lot. We were poor. I didn't know that <laughs> until I got to be an adult, but it was such a close community and we were so much family that I didn't even know, you know, I didn't, I didn't miss out on anything. I felt that 
we were rich in love. Whereas right, now, right. you know, my kids, they don't have that. We don't have that community, that environment. So I think I had a very good childhood. No, I didn't have a silver spoon, but yes, I was pretty much spoon fed. I had everything I needed to make sure I survived. Nice. Nice. Uh, same with me. I stayed, I stayed in the boondocks. I stayed where, where people here call it it Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> That's the little town. That's the little community that I grew up in called It Mississippi. I actually have a shirt that says It Mississippi. Wow. Um, three day school, small school. Um, my mom got a divorce when I was going through maybe the seventh grade or something like that. I was okay. staying with my sister. She was in the Air Force. Um, I was smart. I was a smart kid in school. I never applied myself. I never. Right. I was one. I was one of those people that just during the class I could pick it up. I could just pick it up. And I was a class clown. So I'm playing all class and, you know, distracting people. Um, still finished, graduated with honors, uh, uh, all the other stuff, I guess, uh, the gifted program, accelerated for AP, all that stuff. Went to Alcorn State University, um, political science, pre-law. And literally, I, 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 I'm going to tell you why I got into it. I got into uh, political science basically because of a movie. The movie, The Devil's Advocate. Have anybody great, ever seen that nice. movie? Great movie. Great yeah, movie. that's a great movie. Great and so movie. I was like, I get into law. And uh, the only time I applied myself in school, even in even in you know getting my bachelor's, uh, was when when I thought that somebody else thought they were smarter than me. It, it, and that's when I applied myself in school. And so uh, from there, childhood. Um, I, basically, my dad stayed in the same town as I did. I met him. Going into the tenth grade, uh, we have a great relationship, absolutely right. phenomenal relationship. So, not a bad childhood at all. Nice, nice. So, both of y'all stand on the principle that uh, another reason why I, I do this show is uh, is is community in the village. I think that's what uh, the the black community is missing. We're missing going back to the village and taking care of each other. Um, being in, being in those com communal spaces where. I don't have to worry about my son or my daughter coming home and somebody doing something to them because the whole neighborhood knows who they are. You know pause. what I mean? Pause. <laughs> yeah, I say pause because there is a community, but there's not always a guarantee that something won't happen. And I think that it, as children, that's something that, or as adults, I'm not going to say as children, but as adults, that's something that I think we go back and we revisit so often because a lot of us were abused in these they're not getting killed but right. there are traumas within those communities right. yeah. but, but what I think that I think that in today's today's world mm -hmm. uh, when we uh, complete this village again mm -hmm. most people who are out here abusing us will be mm -hmm. out will be oh, out yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. it won't be none of that. Oh, just don't go back there with Uncle Johnny. We're not going. We're not going. Yeah, <laughs> Uncle Johnny's out of here. Uncle Johnny's in prison. Uncle, Uncle Johnny's Johnny. Yes. Go. Go. Yes. Go. We might like, like like work Uncle Johnny in these stages. Yeah, Uncle Johnny's not. <laughs> that's not happening. So, so that's my mindset when I say yes. you will have a community that the kids can come home and feel free oh, yes. and play in the street, and you know, we, definitely we, they don't we, get we, that. We'll, we'll have a cut the cut the video games day off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> take yeah. yourself outside and use your imagination literally um, we just got through playing tennis so we all about getting outside <laughs> nice 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 okay so uh how did you guys meet <laughs> how we meet um so he threw a um he threw a party for my birthday um, a party for your birthday well it was on my birthday it wasn't oh, for okay. my birthday i'm like i'm like <laughs> Did you have to meet before that for him to Yeah, so, I mean, but I've called it my birthday party. It's, it's a very funny story. We won't tell it on air tonight. I, you, you should tell the story. We're not going to tell that story on air tonight. <laughs> He's giving you permission to tell the story. <laughs> Give me permission to tell my story. <laughs> but uh, no, we met uh, one night. He used to, um, he had a venue downtown Jackson and he hosted a karaoke night. I love karaoke. Can I sing? No. But I love karaoke. Love Tucker. I'm not going to tell y'all the story tonight. We're going to have to do like a private game night or something. And we'll right. talk about oh, the story. Oh, 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 but um, it's definitely a very impactful story. <laughs> and we shared it today. Because um, it's actually been a while ago today. Uh, yesterday we met um, on my birthday. So it... um. And we met and we we didn't start, you know, dating right off. We kind of talked. We worked together for a while. And then eventually it was like, hey, listen, we're doing all this together. Let's see about 
you know, dating. Let's see how that works. We we in these spaces together. Let's try to, you know, see if we can move this to the next level without killing each other. And here we are. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. So how long have you been together? We've officially been dating for a year now. A year? Yes. Okay, so wait, 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 wait. You kind of threw a little uh, ringer in there. He's like, we, we officially been oh, dating. Yeah, yeah, you heard it. Yeah, so how long have you known each other then? So he went to Alcorn. I went to Alcorn. Okay. You knew so, each other there? Um, nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and let, me, let me tell you something. It's almost impossible for us not to have met before. Like, we literally know 500 of the same people. Wow. Literally. literally. I'm talking about, like, literally. Like, like her he family calls his family. sister. He calls his sister. My roommate, he calls his sister. And I'm like, what? Like, how do I not know you? My roommate in college. Okay, listen. I get all, I got, we got all these comments. Yeah, I, 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 think, I, think, I think you're lying over here. I think you, uh, I think you're not, I think you're holding back there. I think, I think something's going on. Like, you like, no, we no. went to the same school. We know the same 500 people. He knew the person you bumped with. His best friends. Like, them? I knew his best friends. Like, when I met him, I'm like, I know these yeah, guys. I used we to hang out we, with these guys. We literally didn't know each other. Seriously, the, that, the, wow. the night that she came to uh, the rooftop karaoke was the first time I ever like, laid eyes on. And so it was just, it was really unreal when we started talking. I was like, yeah, I know her. Well, how you know this person? Well, I know, I, I literally know her whole family. Like, played ball with them for four and a half years at Alcorn. Wow. And so it, it, it was just, you know, like, unreal. And and that's one of those things you say that was ordained. You know, it had to be ordained by God for us not to be in the same spaces. Yeah, you know, two other. years ago and plus like that. So it, 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 it worked out perfect. I, we're gonna tell a story for the fans in the comments. Thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you, fans, for pulling it out of them. Thank you. Okay, thank so come on, let, let me be clear. I'm fine with the story. I'm very, I'm, I'm fine with the story. Okay, yeah. so yeah. it was my birthday, and me and my ex husband, we were not together. We were not together. But, but wait, we wait, were... wait, wait. But, but, but she starts the story off. Me and my ex husband. <laughs> me and my ex husband, <laughs> because like. <laughs> Hi. I'm just saying, so how do you do that? Because we, we that? were friends. We were cool. Me and my, my ex husband, who we weren't together, but we were together at my birthday party. We were. Like, cause, right. cause, like I, I don't Listen. have friends. Listen, right? everybody, everybody gets down the way they get down. I'm not, no judgment zone here. I'm not yeah. judging. Are you going to let me tell the story, Tony? Go ahead. Yes, please. Are you going to let me tell the story? Yes. It's funny to me. Do you want to tell the story? I don't want to tell the story. Okay, so me and my ex husband, we were friends. We were cool. We went out for my birthday. And, um, like, we were at the karaoke thing and like we weren't together you know he was doing this thing I was doing my thing we were just kind of hanging out and so this guy was hosting a party right and so he just kept coming over and talking crazy and stuff and I'm just like okay he's kind of cool or whatever <laughs> so he sang he sang Tennessee Whiskey as his karaoke song so it's like Ooh, oh that's my song oh man that's so you know I was like oh crap I was like okay sing it I never heard I never seen this man before in my life and so as we're getting ready to leave the party this is a good part he's like all right, guys, we got to sing happy birthday to the birthday girl. <laughs> now, me and my husband have not been, my ex-husband, hadn't been in the same space the whole night. And so he's like, happy birthday. And my ex-husband stands up and he's like, I can sing happy birthday to my own wife. <laughs> <laughs> so he so he understood something's about to go down. So he was like... <laughs> Okay. I like. Oh, okay. Then my bad, man. I like. I like my bad, man. Let me give you the mic. <laughs> All right. Okay. And so we've kind of been friends ever since. Nice. Then. So it, that's that's the story of how we met and how we became entangled. But literally, how, how, how you started. That's how. That's how we. That's how we became friends. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Cool. Look. Get the mic out of my hand. The man got the mic out of my hand. I can do this. Okay, man. My bad. I can sing to my own wife. Right. right. I'm like, oh man. I'm like your wife. Now this is not what we agreed to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna blow your high. I see him talking to you all night. Hey, li um, hey li listen, we are nine flights up. I'm like, oh Lord. I said, man, that man's gonna throw me off this rooftop. <laughs> Talk to his wife out here. I didn't know he I ain't know the lady was mad. <laughs> Especially after you done son Tennessee whiskey. 
Oh, right. And I'm over there throwing underwear on the stage. And stuff. Woo. <laughs> Woo. So somebody <laughs> went out as friends and somebody wasn't going out as friends. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's a funny story. But here we are uh, several, several, several years later. <laughs> All right. So I got to fix the picture behind me. So I'm going to take, take you off the camera, but I'm going to ask this question so you guys can jump into this. Okay. Uh, what inspired the Black Man's Journal? Uh, for me, it's it's it was a need. Um, I started with uh, wanting to get to know my son better. Uh, just figure out what was going on in his head, why we weren't communicating the way we should. And I thought about who I was a long, long time ago, 25 plus years ago. And I remember I like to write. All of us in our community have been writers at some point. If it's poetry, if it's love letters, you know, of this age anyway, all of us had a writing spirit about us. And I thought about at that time, I was very, I felt like I was a better communicator when I could write things down on paper. So I say, I tell you what I'm going to do. I say, well, I'm going to get, I'm going to start writing some questions down for Landon and just let him answer the question in full. Because if he's even, if a child is even the the smallest amount intimidated by the parent, and it happens a lot, right? Uh, then then he will be able to get his whole answer out without me interjecting him or him wondering what I'm going to say. Right. So I start, I start writing these questions out. Start writing these questions out. I'm like, man, this is pretty good. And so after I wrote so many questions out, I said. Mm -hmm. Man, I, I don't know none of this stuff about my own dad, you know. And I'm thinking, like, I'm thinking, me and my dad have a great relationship, right? And I literally couldn't answer these things for him, you know. He needs to answer these questions, and I need to, I need to get the answer from it. But I hadn't asked these questions because normally, Tony, uh, we talk about the same things over and over. Us as family members or loved ones, you talk about, you talk about sports. Which yep. you talk about food. Yep. You talk about work. Yep. And you talk about church. And now, you I'll, I'll, and right. you on the block. That's it. <laughs> and, but, but all those things, if, if anybody was uh, deadly sick or something happened to them, th those things will be secondary very quickly. Where right. you worked at, who your favorite team is, you know what I'm saying? Where you ate at two weeks ago, none of that stuff would matter. And but that's really that's ninety percent of how we know people. Oh, right. his favorite team is this. Oh, he worked at this place. Yep. And so I said, man, I said I think I got something here. I said if I could get all these questions down, I said I think I could really help our community. And that's that's how the idea was birthed. Nice, nice. Um, so, uh, sis, how do you how do you contribute to this whole thing? Like, how does that you know? Ninety eight percent. Huh. She can she hit 98 of everything you see, she puts together. No, really, yes, easy. 98%? Yes, yes, yes. It's funny because, um, literally, um, I had went to pick up um, one of our daughters from the hairdresser, and we were on the way home. and He called and he was like, I got the perfect idea, and I was like, Okay, tell me because he, he has. 10 billion <laughs> ideas, right? So, and every one I try to bring to fruition. So I'm like, all right, bet, you know, what you got? Let's talk about it. I was, was so like, excited. He was like, I want to do a journal and it's Hello Black Man. I said, what I need you to do, you know, we on the way home. Go look up the, um, look up the information, see if it's uh -huh. a trademark, see if there's an e uh, uh, website out for it. Mm -hmm. If there's no website out for it, it's not a trademark, go for it. Let's do it. And right. so I literally got home. We looked up the website. We bought the um the, the domain, domain and um we started working on the questions of uh, the kids, he, the kids and I, and from there birthed the journals. And then once we got the Hello Black Man, it's like, you know what, we need to we, this this is something that everybody needs. You go, you're going you're going exactly where I, I wanted you to go because I was gonna say I, you guys have more than Hello Black Man. Mm -hmm. tell, tell everybody what you have, everything that you have, all the journals that you guys have on, on deck. Okay, we have Hello Black Man, we have Hello Black Woman, we have Hello Black Couple, we have Hello Black Teen, we have Hello Black Child, um, we have Hello Black Entrepreneur, we have Hello Black Educator, we have Hello Black First Responder, 
and uh, we have the Journey Journal. That's and, tight. And we just released one on September first. Yep. The latest and greatest that will be coming out, uh, it's in Amazon now, is Hello Black College Student. Nice. So it's a total of 10 to date. Yep. So you have 10 journals. Okay. That's dope. That's really dope. I, I like that. I like that. I really like that. Because everybody, like, in, in the way your journal is set up, it, it is so... Uh, captivating you know when you when you open it up and you, you have that question and then you have to you have to sit with it and like i don't want to answer that question yeah you, you need to answer that question you know yeah. hey listen, hey, listen I'm, I'm gonna give you a great uh a great example of how impactful i uh of course we think it's really impactful but one of my guys at work one of my supervisors he, he said man i'm gonna I'm support you i'm gonna get a, get a journal from you i said okay well cool he gets the journal he you know he brings the work like man i got the journal i'm gonna start working on it tonight I'm like okay, well, great, man. So let me know how it comes out. And so, like, literally a week or two come out, a week a week or two goes. And so I see him, and he thinks I'm asking him about the journal, but I'm thinking about something else. So hey, so hey, you got it, you good? He comes to me, he's like, "No, man, I, I ain't good. I, I ain't even got started yet." I'm like, "What are you talking about?" He's like, "My journal." I said, "Man, oh, okay." I said, "I thought I was talking about something else." He's like. He said, man, listen, he said, I've been toting this journal around for two weeks. He said, I bring it to work. I take it home. He said, I look at it. He says, I can't just, he says, you know, I don't know how to get started. He says, man, he said, I'm, I'm looking for an easy question. He, no says, uh, he says, man, there is no easy question in the journal. He says, nope. and then I have to decide how, how truthful I want to be in this journal, <laughs> you know, because you can put some fluff in it. You know, nothing. you can put some fluff in the journal and like, you know, blah, 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 nothing. You know, he says, but every one of these questions are so impactful. And so then two weeks, two weeks more pass. What was wrong? I was just reading Erica's question. Oh. Erica, send me your email address. I'll send you a copy of the woman's journal. And uh, two, two, two weeks pass. And then he says, I'm upset with you. I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? He says, man, listen. He says, man, I'm up. He said, I've been up for the last two weeks. When I get off work, he said, I got started writing my journal. He says, man, I'm about 30 questions in. I said, man, there for once a week. I said, you can do it <laughs> once a week. He said, man, I literally can't wait to sit down right. to fill my journal out. Right. And like literally in two weeks, he had done 30 questions. Like they were, the pages were black. Like from the very top to the very bottom, I like. Yeah. Oh man, you see people add pages to their yes. questions, like yes. type in and tape it. I'm like, what? Nice, what nice, nice. okay, <laughs> nice, nice. But that's very impactful. Um, somebody gave me a book called um, "Burn After Reading," and mm -hmm. it's a it's a it's a book with a bunch of tough questions, mm -hmm. right? So I, I I completed it about a week and a half ago. Um, so now I gotta burn it because anybody <laughs> find this will be a problem. But now I'm, I'm not it. I can't. I, I, I'm not gonna burn it. What I did was I wrote to my kids. Everything you yeah. want to know about dad is in it. Right. I like that. So That's I, huge. You know, when 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 I when I when I take my part in my part in uh, ways they can they can have that at my funeral and they can you know read through it if they need to. Um, but but that's awesome. That is absolutely awesome because what you what you what you're providing before I jump into Eric's question, what you're providing is the first step to healing mm -hmm. and self-therapy, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I, I like the fact that a man said to you, I don't know how to do this. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I should be honest in doing it. Mm -hmm. But the only way you can do it is to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's you it. can't write fluff in there. You can't have the the little the look the little tiny questions. Um like uh Rick brings up sometimes um there's a uh there's a there's a course called momentum. And what they do is they ask this why question. And the why question goes, you do such and such, why? Mm -hmm. you'll, give the, you, you'll give the surface answer. Then why? Why that? Why that? And it keeps making you dig until you get to the bottom of the why. Right. And the bottom of the why normally is painful. Yeah, very painful. You didn't even know that why was there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So so I, I like the fact that he did that to you because Derek um, from uh, Relationship Gumbo has – done several podcasts that I would call him and go, yo, I hate you right now. Because <laughs> <laughs> it put something on your mind. Because right. you're like, ah, yeah, like, I, like you. I need to work on it. Like, this, that's me. Like, that's yeah. me all day. Yeah, yeah, I hate you right now. So I, that's that's awesome. 
Um, so you guys can't kind of gave me a, a, a surface level. What 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 made you guys decide to like to, to do this business together? Listen, um, I, I, I I'm a thinker. I'm a thinker and a talker, and so it it's one of those things where certain connections, like a puzzle piece, like really work together. I'm a thinker and a talker. I'm very sporadic, as you can see. <laughs> and so great ideas, I got them. Names, I got them. Ideas, how many you want? I I, I can give you a, a million ideas to, to start whatever tonight. Now, now there has to be something planned. It has to be something strategically done. That is not my forte. That's, <laughs> that's Kalisha's forte. A format, an answer, a deadlines. She does it phenomenally. And I don't get in her way. I can just come up with the ideas and we work from there. What well, not right. oh, that, that much in your way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would uh, concur that we are, we are like souls. I will come up with an idea. I will see the ending of the idea. Oh, yeah. I have, no, I have no, no, no way of putting the middle together. So, um, so and I'll be I, working I, diligently on something and I'll have my own deadlines. And he'll come in one day and he'll be like, we need to get that out tomorrow. <laughs> Listen, no I don't know what the work that goes into getting it out and tomorrow. I ain't, I ain't done nothing. I like I just sent up a few questions. We did this man, we, hey, we gotta tighten up on this. Like, you gotta have a copyright page, you gotta have this, you gotta have it tomorrow. <laughs> When's your birthday? Who his birthday? Yeah. Uh November 6th. Okay. All right. Okay. Why why'd you why why you get real quiet when he said that? Like you you, you like his birthday and you got you know you, you kind of I was like, I was like, whose birthday are you talking about? Okay. Ask when her birthday when is. When is your birthday? When's my birthday? Yeah. February 18th. February. What is that? What what what's zodiac signs? That? That's what you're going if, for? If, if we're playing zodiac signs, I'm Aquarius. You're Aquarius, okay. I was just wondering what you where you were going with it. No, I just wanted to know. You know, okay. I, I just random things come in my head. Okay, so when's your birthday? My birthday? Yeah. September 17th. Oh, so we just passed the birthday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Happy birthday. Yes. No, I don't know. I don't know if you can sing it to her because it's something happens. So you might get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we ain't singing. We're not singing. And so okay, so here's the thing also. So we want to just to pop up on the screen. Give me the mic. <laughs> I was raised Jehovah's Witness, right? So uh, Birthdays yeah. are not a big thing with us, you know. Right. So right. I, I always delete my page for my birthday because I'm just like very anxious, Ooh. like anxiety. Ooh. And I'm like, hey, I don't want all these random people telling me happy birthday. And he goes and posts this big social media post. So people are inboxing me. And I'm like, why are these people inboxing me? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody inbox you like, why would they do that? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not Somebody's sure. like, oh, this is the best tribute I've ever seen. I'm like, tribute? What are you talking about? Nice. Nice. That <laughs> oh, is I don't like it. It's not a nice song. Don't encourage him. <laughs> no, no. Absolutely. We got to encourage that because he's, he, he's appreciating all the work you do in the back end. Absolutely. So we're going to go back to Eric's question. How do Give us an example of, a, of any any book, a question out of any book. You want to do the couples? You want to do the couples, or you want to do a man or a woman? Any, anyone that you let's do the couples. Yeah. Since okay. you guys are on school screen together, let's do the couples. Let's ask that couple question. You want to give us a number? Uh, number seven. Why seven, Tony? Because it's my it's my favorite number. It's your lucky number. It's seven. The couples journal is a little different from the rest of them, so it's thicker. Um, there is a question for each couple in the front. It makes nice. you identify who partner one and who partner two is. And okay. there's also activities on uh, once a month. And so it's like, hey, do nice. this together, and then partner one and partner two write about it. Okay. So question number seven. <laughs> it says, hello, black couple. It says partner one, number one, partner number two. Describe in detail your biggest disappointments in life. Wow! Ooh. Nice, Ooh. nice, <laughs> nice. So you so you sitting you sitting with your loved one, really kind of spucing that out. Well, and 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 the the thing I guess we both like about it is it's it's not something that we talk about because no. he always tries to read my face, so we can't have a conversation because while we're talking, <laughs> if my face does anything other than a straight face, he's like. I can't even talk to you. Look at your face. And I'm just like, <laughs> look at your face. So man. now I get to sit down and I get to write this out and he can go somewhere else without my face and sit down and read what I've written. Right, 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 right. 
can try. Listen, sis, you you got that face. You 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 listen. Somebody trying to Thank figure you, out what you thinking? They ain't Thank gonna you. think hard because you because you give it out. You can't play poker. <laughs> <laughs> poker is not your game. The same way. <laughs> oh it's not your game it's at the all. Same way. Yes. Um. So let's let's get into the meat and potatoes of this whole thing. Uh, what's the struggles uh, that you guys have as you know, being a couple and, and, and a business owner as well. Like, what's the struggles? What does that look like? Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Honestly, none. I mean, it's okay. been... I, 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 Wait, I, are we talking about as a couple, as business owners, as couple, business owner couples? Like, right, right. As a business owner couple, all right? Because what people don't understand, right, is that... Let's, let's take it from a best friend standpoint. Mm -hmm. I hired my best friend to come work with me. My best friend's been working, been, he just, he, they know me, they've been around me all their lives, right? So they think that because I'm the, I'm their best friend, they get certain perks at work. Yeah. So when I bring the hammer down, because it's business. It hurts more. It hurts more. It stings, right? yeah, it stings right. a little bit. Like, yeah. Why you treat me like this? Because when we leave here, we're best friends. When we're yeah. here, I'm your boss. Right. So there's, yeah. a, there's a difference that has to be um, understood. So I'm trying to figure out what is that that dynamic. What, what do you? How do you work that out? Go ahead. It, you said none, but if that's what you want to stick with, listen, listen. <laughs> love, I, talk, love talk out there starts. Right. <laughs> this is my thing. Here. We we've never had a serious argument about anything business related. Okay. Are, are, are we going to? You can't think of one. Are we going to are, are we going to agree on everything? We're not going to agree on everything. We're from two different generations. <laughs> we're from two different backgrounds. I handle business different than, than she does. So we're going to have, well, I thought we were going to do this. Well, why you thought that? Well, make me understand. You know, so we have those conversations. Uh, but as far as we don't need to do this anymore, we I, I, I'm sick of this. Let's kill it. No, I'm, it, it never even crossed my mind. Now, I don't know if I drove her to that point. I, I don't know. If she, if she had, she didn't tell me. I mean, so, okay, so there are some things that we butt heads on often. And I think when when we decided to be a couple versus being business partners, what he doesn't understand is I'm always in business mind. Okay. So he'll come to me, like he'll get some information from somebody and he'll come to me with this great thing like oh my god this is so amazing i just want to tell you about it and me i'm like okay did you ask this did you ask that did you talk about that did you say this and, <laughs> and, and he'll shut down he's like i don't have all the answers for you you know and, like, <laughs> and so he gets mad and i'm like i'm just i'm not upset that you don't have the answers i just want to make sure that when you're dealing with people right, you're right. always thinking on the business side right. so i've had to scale back and be like okay if he comes to you with a great idea just be like <laughs> Tony, li Tony, listen. Imagine a kid with a puppy, right? Gets a new puppy, and he's so happy, he's so excited. Now he don't know what a puppy, puppy gonna sleep. He don't know what a puppy gonna eat. He don't know about getting no shots. Like that's me. <laughs> like that's me. Right? I'm like, I'm so excited. I want to show her. Right. Like, look at this puppy I got, and she won't know. Where the puppy come from? You got money. Look at the puppy. Why the puppy look like this? Why the puppy got a spot on him? Who the collar come from? The puppy this? Oh, I don't know. So now all that. it's like, oh, cute puppy. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. That's. I, I think one of the other things that that we really have kind of you know went back and forth about is he tries to take weight off of my shoulders. So he'll go behind my back and he'll get set up me to do things, and then he'll come to me. He's like, I got this set up for you. <laughs> <laughs> what? You got this set up for you? I'm like, why, you why didn't you talk to me about this on the front end? I'm trying to help you. I thought I was helping you. And I'm right, like, right. Tony, listen, so, so this is, you're helping me. this is something bad to her. It's not bad. It is something <laughs> not positive. It is not, it's not, not positive. It, well, you, what is it? I just what? want you to talk to me about it. On the Friday, that's all. But I mean, it, it's never like you said. It's never like, like you know, keep going. It's never destructive. You know, it's just no. like, all right, let's get back on track. Okay, let's figure out how to make this work because clearly you got it all figured out. You just need me to get. I over. never said I had it all figured out. That's not what I said. I said, hey, let me see if I could go from helping two percent to five percent. 
<laughs> if, if only for today. If I could just bump my little average up a little bit. That's all. But the, she she likes the 98%. She likes the 98% it. span of control. I appreciate you helping me. I do. <laughs> do I not appreciate it? I, I'll be do. a little mad sometimes. I'll be like, what? I did what? <laughs> but I do appreciate it. I do. Would you say 98% of control? 98. I, t- I said that. All right. okay. He's not telling that's us. Beautiful. That's beautiful. He's exaggerating. All right, so we, we, yes, we, yes, we, love Tucker. Yes, ask permission to help. Yes, that's what I need to do. And, and, oh, love. That's the other thing he says. He's like, I just want. What, what was that thing he said? That I, don't I don't know. I don't know. You won't give me room to operate. That's what he said. <laughs> so then I relinquish all control, right? I'm like, right. all right, you got it. Do your right. thing. And then he's like, well, what do you think about this? I'm like, wait a minute. You just asked me for the control. I'm giving it to you. Nice. <laughs> so it's, nice. it's, we balance each other out very well. <laughs> hey, Greg, we, I'm, I'm glad we brought this up because we're right in a situation where I want to talk about. Both of you tell um, each other what your strengths are, what the other person's strengths are. You tell me what her strengths are. You tell her, uh, me what his strengths are. Okay. Uh, her, her strength is diligence. I mean, as far as follow following up, uh, asking fifty five questions where I would ask five. Right. Uh, so she has all the details, dates, times, uh, phone numbers, emails, business cards. Like she she's a a gatherer, a hoarder of information. Nice. Uh, nice. So so all that that's what she does well. And as far as uh, social media. Uh, I'm the, the talker, but she does all the flyers and social media, the, the etiquette part okay. um, from that standpoint. So all that she does absolutely f- phenomenal. Meeting set up, on time, stuff like that. That's all her. <laughs> okay. Um, he is the face. He is the talker. He is the one who sells the product. Like With him being in the forefront and actually living his truth because like this came about because he felt that he had a need and through this need i've seen growth from him so he's the one who is actually selling and making sure that we are doing what we're supposed to do and i'm able to see his growth and that's what keeps me pushing forward to make sure that everything goes well so he can continue to grow continue to be a better dad a better man a better spouse a better whatever it is that he wants to be nice (laughs) nice i like that I like that. Uh, so what are your biggest challenges? Um, our biggest challenges in life or business? Both. Relationship. like um, in li- And challenges is time for me. I don't know about him, but, you know, we have collectively five, six kids. And um, <laughs> we've got football. We've got basketball. Wait, come out. Is it five or six? Because you, you like, like you can't be half pregnant. Like, so. <laughs> No, I can't. I can't did, have did you adopt one? Did you did you find one in the football field? Except well, so, home? Like, that. listen, you 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 think it's a joke, but like, so I have nieces and nephews that are here now. Okay, <laughs> so okay, our house okay. is always full of kids. Okay, but, literally every weekend there are more kids here than we have birthed <laughs> or help giving birth every weekend. But I, I said five six because he has a stepdaughter, so it makes it okay. my stepdaughter. <laughs> so. Okay. So and we, I don't like to leave her out. So six kids, no, that's, that's awesome. just two that's in my awesome. three. That's so absolutely awesome. yes. um, I, I appreciate that as well because I, I do believe in when couples break up that they should put away their personal differences mm-hmm. and raise the children together because the children mm-hmm. has nothing to do with they have nothing. Breaking. They had nothing to do with that. That's they it. had nothing to do with I, I can't stand your guts and you can't stand my guts. To come together um, in the village and, and raise that child. That's so, right. um, if you can find some time, I think Love Tucker needs uh, an assistant. <laughs> I got you, Love. Hit me up. <laughs> you better cut it out. You got a lot. You got a lot of stuff on your plate already. I mean, so, you know, um, we do run effective marketing and networking, so we do a little, you know, business with that as well. So, she yeah. needs some help. I'll definitely, you know, give her what she yeah. needs. At least put her in the direction to where she needs to be. <laughs> Well, well, that's fantastic because my next question is, what are your other endeavors? Um, so he's a photographer. I don't know if we ever even said that. Um, we both have full time jobs. I'm by I'm by profession. I always say by trade, but by profession, I'm a nurse. 
Okay. Um, he has a nine to five. He works. He's a manager. I'm speaking for you. Speak no, for go ahead. No. <laughs> so effortless. He's a manager at Nissan North America. And um, so, you know, we, we have busy lives. And that's why I said time. Our biggest challenge is time and making sure that we're putting time into everything. The businesses, our children, each other. And that can be a struggle with 24 hours. And then you got to get eight hours of sleep and, you know, you work eight hours. So that only leaves a small amount of time. And like I said, we yeah. got football. We got kids. We got daughters that's doing all kind of different stuff. We got a senior this year, a yep. junior. Wow. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we got a lot going on. So time is, is my biggest challenge. Yeah. What about you, sir? Uh, same time, uh, as for, I guess, from a business standpoint. So she took the, I guess, the more personal role. From a, a business standpoint, it is being eye to eye with the right people uh, because you, you any, anywhere we've set up and, and had the opportunity to speak to people about what we're doing, they're blown away. Right. Uh, they are they are captivated by, wow, yeah, I want it. I want it. This right. We need this. We need right. this. Um, but when you have something like this, it is it's not always as popular from a social media standpoint. Right. Uh, because it it is work. It's work involved. Yep. It's not a fancy brand. Nope. It, it, it's not. It, it, it's something that's gonna sting a little. And so from a social media standpoint, just gaining traction with the right people, with the right like-minded people that say, Hey, this is an opportunity. This is a tool I need to put in my tool bag. Right, uh, right. So from from our standpoint, it's just getting in front of those people. It, and and I'll tell you this, we when we first got started was literally a few months before the pandemic. Right. right. Before, we, before we knew anything. So so when we first got started, uh, we had trips like literally we're going to go Atlanta. We're going to go to Orlando like we we had it planned out, like literally within a year would have hit almost every state. And then the world shuts down for right, right. months at a time. And so we were like, oh, my God. So, you know, just getting back on, I guess, getting back on track, it, it, it allowed us to do some things positively. Uh, but this is a brand that we, we can do a lot from a social media standpoint. But face to face, when someone can explain to you how impactful these journals can be, uh, I tell people this all the time. We are so close to not having anything written down by us. That is kind of scary. Uh, I have nothing written down for my grandmother. As right. smart as she was, as wise as she was, as all the things she went through, I have nothing written down from her. Like nothing, not even a note, a scribble, or nothing. And so, and so, my mom is not. She's not into writing. So I'm trying to coaching her into writing stuff down and things of that nature. So here we are. We are all laptop texting. We right. all right. social right. media. Right. And so you're only going to put so much on social media. You're only going to put so much truth on there because most of it's for entertainment. Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, whatever. It's fun and games. That's not who you are. That's your entertainment side. This is what you that's what you want to show people. That's the face of the Japanese say that's the face you want to show people, right, not the right. face in the real mirror. Yeah. Uh so with this, you get a chance to be real you, genuinely you. And now sharing that with somebody could be impactful for generations. Oh, absolutely. Um, and, I'm, and I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I'm part of an organization called uh, Legacy for Men. And during the pandemic, we used to have a lot of uh, Zoom calls, mm -hmm. uh, 20, 30 men on there, just, you know, just, just rapping, talking about men stuff, right? So one day I just asked the question, I'm listening to them talk about things. And, I, and the question came to me, how many of you know your grandfather? or your great-grandfather, what was his name? What did he do? And out of those men, only like three knew who they were. And that was like, no wonder we can't get it together as men because there's nothing being passed down anymore for us to do that. So that aspect of you writing, putting this book together is very important. And I think that we should push it to families to say, hey, listen, mm -hmm. you are now the matriarch. Right. right. Grab it all us. the information you can. It's us. Put it in this book and pass it down. Yes. It's us. What what the kids are missing is where do I come from? Yes. Indeed. What is the struggle that I that my parents and my grandparents they went through so that I can be here? What did they survive? Right. So now we're not going to school just to go to school. Right. Now we're not just playing around. We we understand the the the, the 
even if they were um, small giants, we stand on mm -hmm. we stand on the backs of giants, mm -hmm. right? We, we 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 literally stand on the backs of giants because I tell people all the time, if black people weren't God's people, they would not be here. I agree. They didn't want you to read. If you tried to read, they'd kill you. They didn't want you to, to escape. Like, this actually happened. Like, this happened. When they, right. gave you, when they gave you freedom, they didn't give you freedom. They really give you freedom. Right. They knocked you off from everything. They gave you the worst possible schools. And, and what I try to tell people is stop looking at the, the span of slavery. And our freedom is really under 50 years yes. of real freedom. And yes. think about what we've done within that time. Right. Right? It's, right, it's, right. It's, it's huge. We just had this conversation just right. about so if, so yeah. first generations. So we start moving in that direction where we're, we're passing down legacy information to our children. They no longer go to school going, uh, you know, I don't really have to go to class. Um, I'm going to cut school. I want to hang out on the block. Mm -hmm. you, re you begin to realize what the, the trap the block is, yeah. right? Because inside those communities, if we came together inside those communities and spent our money and grew our businesses inside those communities, be unstoppable. Yeah, unstoppable. Be absolutely right. unstoppable. So, yeah. so I appreciate that thought pattern. And, and however you need me to help you push that forward, that that's that's definitely going to happen. Okay, so let's go into the other thing that you got that I like to see, and it makes me laugh because I watched it the other day. Let's talk about the workout show. <laughs> um, so right quick black girls getting their shift together our best seller is black man because most black women want their men to communicate <laughs> so they are buying the book for their men yep. and they're buying it you know as gifts and we, we want to do um this is something that we just came about maybe a month of or a week of gifts for men you know and you know what what do men want and making the book a part of that so but um that's dope. our workout show. <laughs> no. <laughs> Y'all listen, it is a struggle. This man <laughs> does not like to work out. <laughs> well, the show the show that I saw, you didn't want to work out. That's when you was taking the cowboys and cowbells and put it between your legs. Mm. He's like, you need to do three more. You was like <laughs> so here's the thing it's, it's, it's about consistency so like neither, neither one of us want to work out let's be right, let me right. be clear okay. but, um, right. Ooh, let's work out we can't wait and we push each other we do. more so than we uh probably know but yeah. i we love it because it keeps us active and we know there's somebody out there that needs that motivation there's right. somebody out there that's like i don't want to do it but if they see us being consistent and working and working every week we only do this once a week yeah. <laughs> so you can do it once a week too we only do the show once a week we try to work out every day yeah. so you know it's it's fun and it keeps us active and it keeps our audience entertained because i know they know we struggling yes <laughs> yes I had, I had a great time i was like look at these two clowns this is <laughs> listen the clowns is what we are. listen, listen. He was like he did his and he looked at you like you only gonna do one <laughs> Listen, un unedited. We we yep. doing no editing. Yep. We're not pre-recording. Like you getting what it is. Like when it when those workouts are over, when it says workout over, we be like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> and, oh it's over with. <laughs> we enjoy it. We get our sweat on, and we stay um, active. We stay having fun together. Nice, <laughs> nice. Um. So, what other podcasts do you guys have? Got the workout. You got the hello. And we do uh, on Tuesdays. We do Hello Black Entrepreneur. So, so right now we have a thirty minute segment every Tuesday with the entrepreneur that comes on and basically talks about their product. You know how they got started and things of that nature. Uh, so we we just kind of split it up different because there's so many people uh, that have great things, you know, and they just need for someone to see it. Right. And, right, and, and right. so as where where we didn't see we had those platforms a couple of years ago uh we wanted to ensure that anybody that crossed our path that that wanted that ability to come on and speak we want to make sure they have that opportunity so we have hello black man on mondays on tuesdays we do hello black entrepreneur and on wednesdays we do workout wednesday okay cool 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 so there's three podcasts you guys have Three. Well, it's all under the Hello Black Man podcast. Right. It's all under. Yeah. And Wednesdays is not really a podcast. It's more of just a fun show for us. 
That's the workout, right? Monday struggle. Mondays and Tuesdays, um, you know, we do those and they are uploaded to all of the podcast streaming socials and um Apple Podcasts and StreamYard and all those things. But Wednesday, we just out here acting a fool. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Um, so for the couples out there or the future couples out there, mm-hmm. what, what tip would you give them about um, working together as a couple? You Come on. Come on. Stop playing around. <laughs> about work. So, so relationships are work. Okay. And I think that we work so well together because we started out working as a team and having to maneuver each other's personalities in business. And that's where we started. That was the foundation of our friendship, the foundation of our relationship. So if you can deal with somebody on the business side and you can see that you can trust them, whether it be financially, whether it be, you know, with the everyday workings of something, then you can work in a relationship because working in a business takes communication and it takes it takes consistency and it takes a lot of getting to know one another and right. being able to trust one another. So, you know, building that foundation, it's okay to work together if you know your strong, you know, your strengths and your weaknesses. If, yeah. if, if you if you do a, a Hello Black Man journal before you do business, right? You got to do a Hello Black Man <laughs> journal. You got to do a Hello Black Couple journal because you may right. learn that you don't want to be there. <laughs> nice. nice. So I got it. So, so another question: um, What are no? What are, what are, what are the no nos for working together as a couple as businesses? What, what would you say are the no nos? Uh, mm-hmm. I would I, I would say uh, no ulterior motives. Uh, just ensuring that 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 the goals are the same for both entities. Uh, if if we're if we're trying to put the product in certain places. Uh, then she needs to know that. Like she needs to know that. Hey, these are our goals. We, I want to reach out to this person uh, because I, I, I'm very, uh, I guess, hyper and and I'm very, I spontaneous. guess, spontaneous, right? <laughs> so I may have a conversation, a lengthy conversation, and or maybe two conversations in. And so then when I say, hey, two, I call it two. I said, hey, too, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about this right here, and I got this going on, and X, Y, Z. She's like, well, when did this start? I, like, well, I talked to him the he other day. question. Like, you when know, did you start talking about this? I'm like, well, we just started talking about it, and this happened, and this happened. I don't happened. know. And so, and, so, and so versus doing that, and so now she feels like she put in, she's put into a place of, you know, not knowing, of What's being left I behind. Mean? I don't know. What word did you use? Privy. Right. I oh, well, oh, she said, she said, yeah. I wasn't privy to that conversation. <laughs> I wasn't privy to that information. I'm like, yeah. no, like you, just, you just wasn't there. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so so what I try to do is say, hey, listen, I'm about to talk to someone so about this. And so normally the conversation I was going to have, she can help improve it. Because okay. she's gonna say, make sure you ask this, make sure you ask this, make sure you ask it. I'm like, no, forget this had a conversation with me. Because I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna <laughs> open a group chat. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna open a group chat. Because you want to make sure I don't miss nothing. I, exactly. Because yeah. I don't know all the questions you finna ask me. No, you yeah. not gonna hurt my head. It's, it's, this is so funny because this is also something that we talked about. We, we, because we also walk almost every day. Yeah. And on our walks, we probably should record those too because they are very comical. He's like, um, he's he's talking to me about something that he's extremely passionate about. He's like. I don't think this should be this way. And I don't feel this way about this. And I'm like, but what about this? And he's like, why are you asking me that? And I'm like, I'm trying to strengthen your argument. Like right, right now right. you have holes in your argument. He's like, well, I'm not even going to talk about it. Then. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Before I jump into my next question, uh, let's go with uh, black girls getting their shift together. Let's go with her question. Okay. Because that, cause that'll go right into my next question. We are never not in business mode. And that's what I was just telling you earlier. Like, if he comes to me with something, it could be him just telling me something that happened today. And I'm like, well, what about this? Well, what about that? <laughs> How did you handle this? And he's right. like, it's just this. Like, but, um, no. but we did recently, we took a vacation um, a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago, um, out to Killeen, Texas. And we were able to actually wind down yes. and, and we needed it. And we don't do that enough. So yeah. to answer your question, shift together, we need to do more of winding down. Mm-hmm. And, and every now and then we do go to the comedy club, but we're in business mode when we do that because we're trying to meet the comedy. Right. Of course. Yeah. 
<laughs> so and when we go out, like most people go out just to enjoy themselves, we're always in business mode. Like get some cards, get some cards out, network, meet people. So we're gonna have to figure out this whole business mode, how to turn it on and off. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get a little personal, a little personal right now. A little personal. Bring it on. So how do y'all keep the romance strong? What do y'all do for that? Romance, what's that? <laughs> I'm very romantic. Like I am, I'm a listener. Like I am, if he's like, oh dang, I got a scar on my shoes or something or something happened. I'm like, okay, I'm going to order him something. I'm going to have it here. I got flowers laid out. And you know, he's like, he says, he says I'm bitching him. That's what he said. <laughs> Cause Girl. I'm sorry. This is a, a family show. Like, okay, I'll pull up the I'll, car. I'll, 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 give, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you one. I'll give you one. <laughs> okay. I won't say anymore. I promise. But I, I'm the romantic in the relationship. Um, He's nice. He's sweet. He does things sometimes. But tell us about your romantic. Listen, I'm, I'm going to tell you what she did one time. <laughs> so she sent some flowers to my job. Right. Nice. And so, no, it's not. No, <laughs> no. No, it's not. No, I, I have a kind of job where you cannot send things there. It, you it, tell it, me that. You, listen, <laughs> you can't send things there. It's a foreign trade zone, so you can't oh, okay, send okay. you can't send things back and forth right, there. Right, 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 right. So, so I get to work and I and and I'm trying to scan scan my badge. Badge won't work. I'm like, what's going on? You need to come to Central Security. Like, come to Central Security. <laughs> like. <laughs> Like man, what's going on? So I, <laughs> right, so I get in there like, hey, sir, you got to sit down. I'm like, sit down. I'm like, I'm looking out. I'm looking outside. Like man, the police out here. Like who? Like what is going on? Yeah, what I do? See the package here. I want to make sure that if I, if I reinstate your badge, that whatever this is is not going to be this, that, and the other. You can't bring this. And I'm like, what is it? I'm like, yeah, you know, my it. heart beating fast. Like if somebody, you know, sent something to my job after me, man, I get the thing. I say. Oh my God! And I say, oh, she's we so. We both sweet. didn't have a good day that day. <laughs> like, why would you do this? I'm like, well, you said you had a bad day, and I was uh, trying to make your day better. <laughs> you, you know, you had to go through 18 le le levels of security just to I get it. No, they didn't tell me, so I found a way around how to get things in the plant after that. So I started right, cool, things cool, another way. Cool, 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 cool. But but from but from a romance side, let me tell you what helps. A person that's not always downing you, that helps. Okay. If you, I don't care what kind of relationship you're in. I don't care, you know, what kind of bodies y'all got or nothing. But if, if that person is always mentally draining you, the romance is not gonna last. It's not. Right. It's right. not. I don't care. I don't care what how she looks physically. If she is mentally beating you down all day. I don't care what his abs look like. If he mentally beating you down since all day, it, it, it's not going to last. It's not. You're not going to be attracted to that person that way. That physical attraction will go away like that if the, if the mental is broken. Right. Uh, but she's always building me up and and, and it's, it, it's it's easy to do. She, she's, she's, she's easy to love on. But how is you romantic? <laughs> Like this, I'm like, hey, mm, are we doing that kind of thing? <laughs> hey, I'm gonna tell you something funny. Neither of us like holding hands. Really? Like, In public, like, especially. Like, listen. <laughs> Like, listen, if I reach at her hand in public, like, you like, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> like, oh, what you doing? It feels you? weird. <laughs> it feels weird. Like, Words. Oh my god. That is hilarious. Hey, but men are men are notorious for doing it if they see somebody looking. Y'all know what y'all do. Like, oh, it's a bunch of men around. Let me grab your hand. That's not what we're doing. But no, I we it's just it, it really feels icky to me. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, Icky. Um, so what is the ultimate goal that you're trying to reach for your business? Like what what would make you be like, I right, we did it. Like we can, it's it's here. We, Ser we, serious XM, full full on talk show where we're okay. bringing people on, bringing families on, where we're really allowing people to change their behavior okay. for the long term. Nice. Uh, seeing change, you know, it, it's there's no dollar amount that will say this is this is working. No dollar amount. It's no only dollar. how many how many lives we can impact. Like how okay. many people can say. I wrote something down 
it it brought me to a place that I could rebuild. It took me to a place where I didn't know it was broken. And so now I'm able to 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 restore something I didn't even know that I had a problem with. And I, I'm a better person. That's the goal. That's okay. it. I, I, I concur. And and I, you know, I get kind of emotional talking about it because we have not um we've had a very um different relationship because when I met him, he was very he was very standoffish and like there was this wall that he had up and that wall was so thick and like I chiseled and I picked and I chiseled and I picked and I got a little bit, a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here. But when this came about and he was able to freely express himself, it made a huge difference and it opened up a door for us to get to where we are because like he literally would not talk to me about certain things like i would ask questions because i'm a question asker right he'd be like <laughs> he'd be like is it is it is it raining outside <laughs> and so he's in a much better place so it works you know and, and being able to write things down and seeing how much it has changed him changed the kids have brought us all together I think that, you know, like you said, being able to do that for people all around the world would be amazing. Nice. I like that. I really like that. Um, so winding down, we got about five more questions left. Uh, what are your biggest influences? Our biggest influences? Yeah, each of you. What what are you, what are your biggest influences? What what do you when you say influence? Here I am with these questions. <laughs> you ask? Like uh who motivates you outside of yourself? Like, who do you look look up to? Like Michelle Obama? Is it you know somebody in fashion? Is it a businesswoman that we don't know about that you like? Yo, I want to be like her. You know, when I when I really put it down, like who influences you? Like who 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 is the uh, the catalyst to, to to move and to move you for what you do? For me, it's him. I can't even I can't even lie and I I'm not capping because people be like oh she capping she so capping put a cap in the comments he motivates me in so many ways because what he lacks I know that I have to provide so for to know that I can move him toward his goals is motivation for me and other than that our kids you know there's so much that we know that they need to 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 excel to succeed you know there. I can't even see her. I don't know any celebrities that I'm looking up to because I barely watch TV. He makes me watch TV. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, there's nobody I can say, oh, yeah, that person. But somebody collectively that we do follow because we have um, befriended them are the real social medias, comedies, uh, comedians, uh, to hear more. Um, Tony Baker. Right. Tony Baker. Uh, Kevin Stage. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They, they are very funny. Yeah, we've been able to hang out with them and we went out to L.A. to be with them. And they really have, you know, made us realize how much work is behind this. People right. don't realize if you're right. not pushing content consistently, if you're not doing things to, to push your brand. And, and that's the time that we don't have to make sure that our brand is being seen is pushing that content. So those are people outside of, of him that keep me motivated and pushing me forward. Right. And, and, I, and I saw the uh, the little commercial to share this for you guys mm -hmm. you talking about the book. I was like, that's 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 awesome. That's yeah, he has, yeah, he has incredible large following. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, would you consider yourself a power couple? <laughs> I, I think we're definitely on a trajectory. Uh, I, I think that we there. <clears throat> I mean, how I want to put it. There, there are definitely people that look up to us. There are definitely people that we mentor uh, from a business and a relationship standpoint. Uh, so so when, when you say power, people think money. Right. Most yeah. times people say, OK, how much well, they got, how much money they worth and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I, I think I think when you when you talk about power couple, I think impact uh, when you walk into a room, uh, do people are people attracted to you or not? You walk into a room, you're a millionaire, and nobody's want to know if you're, you know, your thoughts on certain things. If, right. you, if you speak intelligently, things of that nature, that's powerful to me. You know, I, I've been into into rooms where you know the person that was speaking the most intelligently was making the least amount of money, but that but that that conversation, I got the most out of. 
Okay. Uh, so from that standpoint, I, I think we're definitely on a great, a uh, uh, phenomenal trajectory of, of being of being a power couple. Nice, nice. Uh, you gonna sit there and not answer that question? You gonna leave that there forever? Or do you do you have something that you want to add to that, young lady? I don't have anything to add. Look, of course, don't overanalyze the question. Then don't you. tell me what to do. <laughs> don't overanalyze the question. I'm Carisha. analyzing everything, Derek. <laughs> All right, so here's a question. Um, as we get, we, we, we're going to have to lock this thing up. Okay. Name three things that you would tell entrepreneurs. Uh, for me, the first thing is try. Because uh, uh, we, we a lot of ideas uh, from kids to teens to adults, they die here. They, they, they end here. One of my, one of my, Sayings is die with no great ideas. Nice. Die with no nice. great I ideas. Like that. You know, so if you see if you see this tomorrow morning on my um my uh, I am twenty nine. All good. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. That's one of my. That's one of my. Uh, I've been saying it. I guess this is as plain as I can put it. Uh, that's my little saying when I do quotes. But die with no great ideas. Like, w- what's the purpose? Like, why would you die with that idea? Like, I want to do a food truck. I want to do, I want to have a a, a a music CD. Like, this is me personally talking. And so, Kalisha got to help me make all this stuff happen. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so, I, I'm not going to die with that. I have a 3% decent voice. So, I, I know I sound as good or better than somebody. So, right. I want to put some music out for somebody to listen right, to. Right, if, there's no, right. if there's no more than, than just myself. But, number one, they got to try. Right, Two, right. they need to, um, they need to, oh, they need to execute their plan. They need to literally figure out what it's going to take and write it down. I hear too often people in uh, that are entrepreneurs. I, I just I stayed up late. I worked hard. Like, wh- what is that? Like, what does that right, mean? Right, right, because right. You, when your child gets ready to start a business, that's not helpful. You know, it's a little motivation, but it's not really helpful. Here, I got my EIN. I applied for this. This is my marketing budget. This is right. this is this is how I scale my business. Like a true plan. Like write the stuff down. So when somebody else needs help or you need to look back on it and revert to yourself, you have that ability. Uh, <clears throat> the, the third thing I'll tell entrepreneurs is you're, you really need to understand what networking is. It's not standing around the room and getting a bunch of likes on your social media. Right. It, that is not networking. It is how can we help each other? Like really help each other. And it has to be genuine. Uh, It it can't be one of those things where uh, I'm going to share this for you. You share this with me. Because the first time I don't share something for you, you're going to be like, "Uh, he ain't sharing my stuff. I ain't going to share his stuff. And then in in a a matter of months, nobody's sharing nobody's stuff. Exactly. You know, I've seen it. I've been in those groups. If they don't work, it do not last. You have to genuinely get in a circle of people that want to see you succeed. Exactly. And this is what, and this is what I tell a small, I guess a small group of, of entrepreneurs that I work around. Let's say it's six of us, and we're all dedicated to our certain brands, things of that nature. And if we're and we're helping each other as much as we can, you know, as we do as we go along. If one of us becomes a millionaire, the circle wins. Right, like the circle really wins. Right, right. But if you're not willing to, be, it's okay. If I'm the last millionaire in the bunch, I can live with that. Right. You know, <laughs> but 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 somebody has to be on a trajectory. Somebody and you have to be on a trajectory, right? Like, exactly. You have to be able to recognize it. And when you recognize that, hey, I see this potential. And when I'm in the room, a lot of times when I do stuff, I wear some of my friends' hats and shirts and stuff like that. It in its own purpose. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it by happenstance. I got a buddy of mine uh, named named Robert Collins. He has a Collins Cane Corsos. This is a plug. He has a, a huge, these huge Cane Corso dogs. I don't want no dog. I I am not a dog lover. But I, like I ain't no dog coming to my house. Listen, right. but I support him and I wear his shirt because I see what he's doing and it's positive. He treats the dogs well. It, it, it's he has a love for it. Right. 
Right. And so I can support him in other ways. I'm not buying no seven, eight hundred dollar dog. That, right. That's not me. I, if the dog was free, I wouldn't want it. Yeah. But I, I can still support him. And so that's where we that's that's where I, I would say find your network, find your network, not your friends. That's because you've been knowing somebody 20, 30 years. That, that does right. not mean they're in your network. That's right. It doesn't mean it. Good stuff. Good stuff. So uh, you're going to just sit back there and not say anything? You're going to let it all carry that one? My little politician takes up all of the time. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> He doesn't leave room for me to speak, but I'm going to give three things. I'm going to give three very <laughs> things, like really quickly. Okay. Be consistent. Yes. Be passionate. Yes. People know. And my third thing, I I you I forgot you talk so long. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> be consistent, be passionate, and be grateful. Oh man, he be grateful because nobody owes you anything. Oh, nobody they don't. has to do anything for you. So right. when you show appreciation and when you are, you know, out there letting people know, replying to comments and Please, you know, reply to people. Talk yes, to absolutely. People, yes. Respond to people. My right. biggest pet peeve in businesses and entrepreneurs is messaging a page and not getting any responses. And there's no make sure you put your, your information on your business pages because right. if I go to your page and I can't find how to contact you, I'm not going to continue to right. search. Exactly. I'm exactly. done. Yeah. And if it's private, I'm definitely not going to request to be your friend. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah, because why are you here? Right. Why are you here with a private page? Why are you here? Why are you here? You, you, <laughs> you, you got a secret page. business? You, right. you want to make a secret million dollars? <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay. Um, what? Wow. What? What's that? That's one of the questions in my journal. I I, I, I wanted to show you uh, when you, before you wrap up. I just want to show you how impactful just answering one question can be. Go ahead. What are you going to ask, Tony? And I'll oh, get off track. Um, <laughs> no. I, listen. I, I'm focused. My ADD won't won't bother me today. Um, name what is name three things life has taught you. Life has taught me to never give up. I have been to the bottom. I have seen the trenches, and I have climbed, and I have pulled, and I have trotted my way out of them. Life has also taught me that you know love is real. Like before I met this crazy guy, I was like, F love, love is not existent. I will never love again. <laughs> and I met him and here we are. We're loving on each other and it feels real. <laughs> so never give up and love is real. Those are two things that life has taught me and I live by those things. Nice. For me, I, I have a little tattoo on my wrist. And okay. it's and it's and it's a it's a rewind button, a pause, a play, and a fast forward. So I got it right here. I can always see it. So one is always remember the past. Remember where you come from. Remember remember the road you travel to get to the point that you are, that you're in. And okay. and and as, as my as my as my lovely said, be grateful. Right. Be grateful. Like really be grateful. And no one owes you anything. The, the second mark on my on my wrist is a pause button. Don't forget to appreciate where you are. I know everybody wants to get here. You want to get there. You want to do this. I want to be here in 10. I want to be a millionaire in 2030. Like today was special. Like today, right. you're here. Today was phenomenal. Did you make the most of today? Right. So pause. Breathe it in. Enjoy today. Enjoy everything about today. Did you learn anything? Did you hurt yourself? Did you, you know, whatever it was, you know, live in this moment. Um, the third mark is in red. It's a play button. Always make progress. Always think about how you can get be a little better. I never forget when I when I first start praying. The only thing I would say is, Lord, make me a better man tomorrow than I was today. Amen. That's it. Just a little progress. Just a little more sense. Right. Uh, from that standpoint, if financially, physically, emotionally, mentally, always make some progress. And the and the last mark is a fast forward. You know, be mindful of the future. Be mindful of the things that we do today and the impact it's going to have in the future. Nice. So don't, 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 that's that's my that's my time. I yield the mic. Nice. 
<laughs> In the words of Derek Jones, you land your plane. <laughs> Y'all be flying everywhere. I'll be like, oh, these planes. <laughs> All right. So two more questions. Uh, this one is, um, what do you wish you would have known when you started your business? Um, I wish I knew. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I wish I knew how much marketing I needed to do, you know, how, how impactful marketing is, because that's how you get people, you know, and it's not always about buying ads. I'm more of an organic type person. Right. How do I reach the masses with my marketing? And uh, we do a lot of footwork and, you know, trying to get into barbershops and get into stores and stuff. So just the the need to market and the budget for marketing. I think I, okay. wish I knew more about that before we started. Cool. Nice. I like that. And I just like that idea you just gave up, too. <laughs> we all about giving out ideas. We don't have any secrets here. Like no. it, if we've done it, we don't want you to work as hard to get it. No, I, I, feel, I feel the same way. Like, pass it down. Like, right. I, 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 I did the hard work already. Here, yeah, take exactly. it. Right. We want to yeah. make your job a little easier than ours was. Yeah. Um, sir? Uh, it's okay not to be popular. Nice. It's okay. Like, 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 like you're going to see brands and things take off around you that you're going to feel have less substance than what you're doing. Right. And you got to be okay with it. You know what I'm saying? As, as a competitive person, you know, it's not, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a jealous person. I want everybody to make it, but as, as a, as a competitive person, you want to catch up. You want to, you know, find your wave as well. Uh, and, and every brand and every situation is not going to be as popular as everybody else's. And you got to right. be okay with that. And like I said, that's where you got to find the people that are looking for your product, that's looking right. for the thing that you're putting out there. Okay. Nice. I like that. So we're going about, about to wrap this up. This is the last question. I appreciate you guys. This has been fun. This has been a lot of fun. Oh, it has. This has been a lot of fun. Um, I, I really appreciate you guys. I adore you guys. And if you did not know, um, Kalisha should know, that we have already begun a community. Um, when I when I put together um, the real shop talk, it was it was behind the, the vein that you talked about putting together a collective, right? That were already doing amazing things, so we can help push each other further, right? I see Rick. Rick goes Rick goes hard every time he's on his show. Uh, Derek goes hard every time he's on his show. Um, Tony Massey when he does his cook, he goes hard. On, on his show. Uh, John, when, when you listen to his podcast and the things they deliver, they, they, they bring it hard. I was like, like I listen to these guys and going, they should be way further than they are. They have mm -hmm. a lot of good content and good information. Why not? Quality. Then, you know, then I came and was like, yo, why don't we just start a, a five man team and just start, you know, pushing the content, helping each other out. And, mm -hmm. and what's so real, real inter interesting about it, I didn't know beforehand that Derek was an IT type of guy. Like he knows all that marketing and behind the scenes stuff. Um, John is a, uh, a a 20 plus year military um, strategist. You know what I mean? Um, Rick has been on. I, I knew Rick. I knew Rick's background because we went to school together. You know, he's been all over all, all over the world touring and all these other things. Tony's a um, is, is is an army guy. He's a he's a he's a corporate trainer. Like, so we have a team that can do all of these marvelous things. And then we got, you know, Tashira Talks. We got um, Dope Discussions with um, Erica. We've got um, Love Tucker comes behind us with her book. Like, so we're building this community of people. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean? you know, black men get, I mean, black, black girls getting their shift together. So we build these community of people who we want to continue to push forward. Like, you'll see me. I, I, advertise everybody's brand. Mm -hmm. You go through my stories and be like, hey, what is he, an ad campaign or something? Like he's got <laughs> everybody's joint in his stories. You know what I mean? I, I, I just have to figure out um, my actual page of how I'm gonna rock that out. Cause I feel that when I put, when I, when I post something on the page itself, it kind of loses value. It kind of goes from, it doesn't 
get as much draw as when I put it in my stories. Mm -hmm. So we are always trying to figure out how can we push somebody forward. So yeah. I'm telling you right now, you guys are now uh, official nominees to the club. Oh, you guys yeah, are with us now. You know what I mean? We will we will help you where we can. We will be promoting the heck out of your, out of your brand and out of your business. Because listen, if we don't do it together, man, and that's this is the one thing we've had fail us as, as a black community. We have not figured out how to do this unity thing. Yet. And nice. that is my one goal. If I have one mission in life, that is my one goal to bring as many people together before I before I tap out. So we can so we can build an organization, at least a foundation for the kids to step on. Yes. Yes. And, yes. And stand on. Um, so my last question is this. I need you to think about this one. All right. I'm not gonna let you run away from it. If you can go back at any time in your life, at any age, mm -hmm. you have to tell us what that age would be and what would we, what would you say to that person and why? Um, if I had to go back to any time in my life, I would go back to probably um, freshman college me, and I would say, take this birth control and take it every day. <laughs> you better not not take this birth control. <laughs> Are your kids watching this? They will. <laughs> <laughs> you oh my best. Gosh. I will grab myself by the collar. <laughs> Tony, I, Tony, 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 Tony. I'm praying for you, bro. One day, you're going to be for you. amazing man that you won't have kids by, but you won't be able to because you got 12 already. <laughs> That's it. That's what I got. <laughs> to share, I that was a kid. real answer. I love to my kids. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I was go back. I, when she said I was going to go back to the first year of college, and I thought it was gonna like, you should take this course or follow this person. She so, said, take your birth control. You better not not take it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I, I got married when I was 17 and it was a shotgun marriage. You know, I regret nothing because I feel like if I if I deterred from my right. path, I would have never been where I am today. Right. So right. I don't regret anything, but I definitely would have taken my birth control more consistently. <laughs> <laughs> well, Erica said she should have told her college self the same thing. <laughs> I'm just being real out here. I'm, I'm saving crazy. lives. Take your birth control, people. <laughs> and love fucking said good idea. <laughs> oh man. Listen, Go, listen. That was a that was a real answer. All right. So we got we got all the women con con uh concurring to, to, to that answer. Today right. was a day right, for right. hell. Y'all don't even understand. I took my daughter shopping for a homecoming gown. I got two boys here and they're fighting with the girls, and I had three girls, and they were it, it was it was a day. <laughs> Literally, that's why I was sweating when I came home because we had to go play tennis. We went to the pool. Yeah, these kids are rough, <laughs> but I love them to death. I really do. Oh, Each and every one. <laughs> Your turn. Okay. Uh, for me, I can't top that. Uh, let, me, let me be clear. Um, I would probably go back to uh, maybe my maybe my eleventh grade year in high school. So the year is nineteen ninety six. Um, I have a lot of athletic, athletic potential, maybe not ability. Uh, I have a lot of, um, uh, education or I guess, uh, I have a lot of education potential, smarts potential. Uh, and I will go back and say, take it serious, right. like take it serious, you know, take it a little more serious now. Uh, because I was one of those people that I always felt like in the, the, in those ages, and you feel invincible at, right. at 16, 17, 18, you feel absolutely invincible. You, you know, you got forever to live. Um, and so I didn't take a lot of things serious. Didn't take right. the ACT serious, right. didn't right. take class serious, right. you know, right. you know, I didn't take sports serious, you know, training and stuff like that. When it comes uh, easy, you don't. Know. Yeah. And so I will go back and say, man, this, take it serious. Like, you know, you, you have abilities, 
But in order to tap into these abilities, you got to unlock some doors. You got to give up some things. Um, and, and I think that that's what I would do. All right. Fantastic. Great job. Great job. I, I really, again, I appreciate you guys being on. It's been amazing. Um, everybody that's watching, I have on the bottom ticker all the places you can follow them. Um, the website is there. Uh, you can over, you go to uh, Amazon, start picking up these books for your kids, for yourself. Uh, so, so you can get you can get it get it popping. Um, yeah, go ahead. Let's let's get, let's get into that question before we close out. Before we close out, um, this is question twenty four in the journal. Okay. In which journal? In the Hello Black Man journal. So every journal is unique. They're no they're not cookie cookie cutter copy paste. Like every journal is unique to the people. And so I wrote this, and I had my son read it on camera. Nice. What was the question? The question is, it says, hello, black man, what or who motivates you? Describe how it feels to be motivated. Your your child is not going to ask you this. Right. They're not. Right. But they need to hear your answer. Yes. Like, they really need to hear what motivates you because all they know is they get the reciprocation. They get the benefits of your motivation, yep. <laughs> your hard work, you getting up early, you staying up late, you, you know, extra job, whatever may happen. They get that, but they need to know like what's turning the wheel. Right. So, because it took me to this age to get it. I, I want my son to get it. Oh, at, exactly. Exactly. Oh, that, right? exactly. But he's not going to ask me this. He's right. not going to ask, not even by mistake. He's not yep. going to ask me yep. this. Yep. And like I said, while we talking about those uh, all sports, food, church, work, this question not going to come up. So I'm, I'm going to read you my answer. And, right, and right. I, I had him read it on camera. Uh, it says, hello, black man. What or who motivates you? Describe how it feels to be motivated. I said, time motivates me. I am 41 years old as of today. And the older you get, the time that was once on your side, you feel like all of it in the world, it seems to be dwindling. Time pushes me to wake up early and stay up late to get things done. Time is a great motivating driver because no one knows how much you have remaining. Purpose motivates me. Knowing something I do or create can change the world so quickly and vastly. Purpose exposes your passion, or at least it should. Having purpose and living in it allows me to seek the greater good. Purpose is something that, I, that will be evident long after I am gone. And that's important to me. People motivate me. People always say people don't do. I, I don't care what people say. Yes, people do motivate you. Right. People motivate you. Both my parents are still alive and in good health. I have children that I want to, to set great examples for. I have an inner circle that loves me unconditionally. It feels inspiring to be motivated. It allows me to push or pull to go through or go around. Nice. Nice. Good stuff. Right? Real good stuff. So, so you sat down and, and hashed that out with him. Right. So now right. he knows that like, he's a part of my motivation. Right. And right. He knows right. where right. he can pull his motivation from. Yeah. And, and what's what's really important about that, right, without a force to do something, mm -hmm. again, that goes back to what I said earlier. When you go to school now, it's not – I'm not only going to school for me. My dad is looking forward to me to bring mm -hmm. home A's, to, mm -hmm. to, 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 to kill us. To kill this test. I'm not sitting here talking to you and playing with you, uh, talking across the table because I gotta learn this this work. Because yep. my dad is out there trying to trying to trying to build something for me. Yep. And nine times out of ten, I'm, he's gonna leave it to me. So yep. how so how am I gonna take it if, if, if I don't know how to uh navigate my, my school? I, the only job I have right now is to do school. Yeah. Right. Now you go now you go you go to school with that legacy of here is what's being done for me. Yeah. And that is so powerful, brother. That is that is so amazing to, to, to put that into to his head. Um, yeah, you can give him a kiss. We ain't mad. Go ahead. We, we, we appreciate we it. Do, we like to see that. black love. We don't do that. <laughs> I know. Y'all don't even hold hands. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hooky. Oh, hooky. Oh, my God. We lock arms. <laughs> so, um, Again, I appreciate you guys. You guys have been awesome. Um, everybody's gonna, you know, uh, follow you guys and uh, jump into buying some books. Uh, a book was already bought today. Um, mm -hmm. Out of team, a, thank you so much. Bought a book for a team, so that, so that's awesome. Um, so tomorrow night, six thirty central, we have uh, Dope Discussions podcast. They will be talking about 
Who was I as a child and who am I now? That's a that's some heavy stuff that it you is. got to deal with. That's some yeah. heavy stuff. So make sure you tune in tomorrow night, 6.30 Central. And if you guys don't know time zones, Google it. And on Monday morning, myself and Jen, we do uh, Monday Wake Up. And Monday Wake Up is about inspiring people to do the things necessary to get done. Um, if you wake up on a Monday morning and it's all mundane and Mondays have a way of affecting your week. So we can give you a positive Monday to say, okay, um, this Monday, this is what we're going to do. We're going to, uh, by Friday, these are the things I want to get off my bucket list, you know, or, or, or my list of things to do. And Jen and I, we have, we, we put it out there. I'm a procrastinator. She doesn't like to get up in the mornings. So for her to get up in the morning at 6, 6 a.m. to do the show is it, it, something she's conquered. Uh, yeah. For me to lose the weight that I said I was going to lose, that's something I've conquered. So we're, we're putting things in place to have, for us to be accountability partners and also take on our audience as accountability partners as well. Uh -huh. And then Monday night, I tell everybody, please, 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 Please invite all the men you can. Women come along them, but I need men to be invited because we're going to talk about the untalked about topic, the silent abuse of boys. That's dope. We've gone over, you know, women being abused and the stuff, the trauma they go through. Um, going back to what I said earlier about the young man who said that um, he tried to kill himself twice because he's looking acceptance from his father. Mm -hmm. that was a, that's a form of abuse yeah. that we don't take in consideration. The father being in the house but being mostly absent is a form of abuse. Telling the child you, you, you act too much like your father and you're not never going to be anything, that's a form of abuse. We're going to tackle all of those things from the sexual side to the verbal side. So wow. you Huge. can understand yes, the me. impact you can understand the impact that some of the people that you're dealing with are carrying with them, right? Because we want to yep. blame the men for all these things that they're not doing. And we've already come to the conclusion. The reason why Hello Black Men was put together, he understood there was a need for black men to express themselves, yes. right? And if you don't have a channel to express yourselves, you, you're going to take all of this stuff and bottle up all of this abusive energy, and you're going to put it out into the world negatively. Yep. And mm -hmm. most time it comes out neg negatively towards our women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sure. some type in one way or another it comes out towards no, our women. So if we can start um, answering these questions and, you know, jump into Hello Hello Black Men journals, uh, have, have these real discussions on, at a higher level, real, rebuild the, the, the community. And I, I really believe this. I've always believed this. One of the reasons why we were able to survive through slavery, through Jim Crow, through segregation was because there was a matriarch to pass down the information. Mm-hmm of why we're doing what we're doing. Yes. Was, there was somebody to oh, say, like, like yes. you're doing for your child, um, here's what, what, what motivates me and moves me, right? Mm -hmm. So now you have stuff, to, here's the reason why you need to go to college, right? And if you're not gonna call, go to college, here's the reason why you need to be a business person. I saw a young man, just to go on a tangent real quick, I saw a young man to, uh, tonight, he was, with his, he was with his sister, he was coming from the laundromat. But you can tell in his mannerism, he had more responsibility. He couldn't be more than 14 years old. He had more responsibility on his plate as this young man, you know what I mean, going through this life. Because you can yeah. tell he was taking care of his sister. You can tell he was serious about his business, about what was on his face. He wasn't mad, but you could tell like he 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 had a he had a responsibility man charge on him. And yeah. this is what we need to give our children. Yes. Yeah. Give our children a responsibility in this mm -hmm. world that they understand their place is valuable. Mm -hmm. Their place is so super valuable. So again, I appreciate you guys, man. Listen, I, I wish I could do this for another two or three hours and to ask some real some more some more crazy questions. Have us back anytime. Have we'll, us back. We'll, we'll definitely circle, circle back and do it again. But um, everybody in the comments, we appreciate you guys. Thank please you all. Follow them. Please get these books and um, the shows that I told we talked about. Please plug in and uh, and like, share. You know, hit 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 the hit the share button. Send it to people you think that will uh yep. will benefit from it because absolutely. Just, I know black man journals. 
we all know people can benefit from that. So we need to push that forward. Right. All right? We are all signing off. We love you. You guys stay right there. I'll talk to you later. All right. All right. <laughs>